Today we're going to be talking about how to measure your guitar setup. Setup, we're talking about action or how high the strings are over the frets. The straightness of the neck, whether your saddles follow the radius of your fingerboard. Another great thing is to check your pickup heights too. The measurements we're going to be doing are within an eighth of an inch, so we're going to need a real small, accurate ruler. Now we got a couple rulers over here that just aren't going to cut it. These are the kind of rulers you would use in school. They don't start flush at the end. There's a little bit of a gap right here before you start measuring zero, so you can't get flush to measure height or length or anything and have accurate measurements. Also, you don't want to try to use a regular tape measure. The measurements are way bigger than what we're trying to do, and your hook's going to get in the way. What we like to use is the six inch Stumac shop ruler right here. It starts flush right from the edge and the measurements are really small, really accurate. On this side, we measure in sixteenths of an inch. On this side, we measure in 30 seconds and 64ths. For example, we're gonna measure our pull pieces on our treble pickup. Right here, we're getting about nine sixty-fourths, And that's pretty accurate, so that's why we wanna use this six inch shop ruler or something similar. Down here at the first fret, you're gonna be measuring within thousandths of an inch. So a way that we like to measure these is with the Stumac string action gauge. We have a whole bunch of these hanging around the shop just because of how many different ways you can measure and how accurate they are. Right here on this bottom line, we have 10 to 140 thousandths. Now we're gonna use this to go ahead and measure our string height at the first fret. On our low E string, from the top of the fret to the bottom of the strings, we're getting just about 10 thousandths of an inch and just about the same thing on our high E string. Like I said earlier, setup measurements get really small. Now that we know what tools we're going to be using, we're going to go ahead and get into this guitar and start measuring its setup. We're going to be taking four measurements from this guitar. The straightness of the neck, your action at the 12th fret, the bridge saddle radius, and your action at the 1st fret. We're going to be starting out with the neck straightness. There's three different ways your neck can be set. It can be set in back bow, which you don't want because you'll have a lot of fret buzz. You can have a slide up bow, and that's called relief, or you can have a, just a perfectly straight neck. Light touch players like me really like dead straight necks, but if you have a heavier hit, you might like a little up bow. Your guitar is a little bit stiffer, and there's a lot more room for your strings to vibrate and not hit the frets. How we're gonna measure this guitar's neck straightness without a straight edge, is we're gonna put one finger right here on the first fret, one finger right here on the 15th fret, or whatever fret meets the body, and you're gonna be looking right around the seventh and ninth fret for a gap in between your fret and the bottom of your string. If there's a gap there, that's the amount of relief in your neck. Now this guitar has a slight gap. I'm gonna go for a dead straight neck, because that's the way I like to play. So we're gonna turn the truss rod clockwise, just slightly in order to take the gap out of there. That should be enough. One thing I'd like to mention whenever you're making a neck adjustment with your truss rod is that you want to hold the guitar in playing position, especially when you're checking it, because if it's laying flat on its back, gravity's pulling those strings towards the fret, and it's going to give you an off measurement. The second measurement we're going to be taking off this guitar is right here at the 12th fret, and we're going to set our outside of E strings before we start messing with the radius of our saddles. This is very important. So I'm going to take our string action gauge, I'm going to get down level with the guitar, and look at our low E string, and top of the fret to the bottom of the string is measuring about 40 thousandths, and just about the same thing on our high E string. Now a cool thing about the string action gauge is that if I want to know what that is in fractions, I can flip over here on the back because we have a chart that converts it. And 40 thousandths for my low E string would be 364s, just a little bit more than 132nd. If you want to change that height of your two outside E strings, you can come to your saddles with the correct Allen key and you can raise or lower to wherever you want. This is up to the player. I'm going to leave mine because this is really where I like it. It's very low and this is as low as I would ever take it on anybody else's guitar. Now that you have your two outside E strings set, you're going to lower your bridge saddles to match the height of your two outside E strings. Understring radius gauges look a little something like this. And we use these every time we set up a guitar in the shop. This is not something most players would have, but if I was doing all my own guitar work, this is something that I would have. And we're going to start by measuring our guitar fingerboard radius. And we're going to be doing that with these cool radius gauges that Stumac sells that have notches cut out for the strings. That way you don't have to take your strings off. Put it right here on our 12th fret, and you're looking to see if you can see any light underneath. And if you see any light gaps, that means it's not the right radius. The right radius, there should be no light coming through. And this is looking to be about a 14 inch radius. So then I'm gonna take the 14 on these understring radius gauges. I'm gonna put them underneath the strings. You're gonna bump it right up against your saddles. Maybe come off of it just a little bit. 
and you're gonna pull up with just a little bit of tension, just enough to touch your two outside E strings. You're gonna pluck your two outside E's. And you can hear they're buzzing. That's what you want. And then you're gonna hit your other ones. My B string doesn't touch, doesn't buzz. That means it needs to come down on height. My G string needs to come down on height. My A string is buzzing up against it, so it's okay. So I need to adjust my D string, my G, and my B string. They all need to come down. Here we go. So the last measurement we're gonna be taking is the height of the string over top of the first fret. Now you don't have a whole lot of control over this unless you get into filing nut slots. And that can be some risky business. The way that I learned to visualize and see the right height is I would take my first finger and I would press down on the third fret of whichever string I'm looking at. And then I would press down just behind the first fret. And you can see the travel and the string down to the fret. And that small gap is your string height over top. How much space you have to play with inside your nut slot. All these are really good. I'm gonna leave them right there. I'm not gonna do any filing. All it takes is one swipe and you've ruined a nut and it's a long time and a headache to fix it. Good clearances from your low bass E string to the high treble E string would measure approximately 25 thousandths, 22 thousandths, 20 thousandths, 16 thousandths, 14 thousandths, and 11 thousandths. That's a good general measurement for what we like to do on customer guitars. Another trick that Dan taught me, if you don't want to trust your eyes and want to be a little bit more accurate, is to take these old strings and use them as feeler gauges. If you still have your string packages, they have the diameter on them, let you know. And then we took some heat shrink wrap that we had laying around the shop and we put them on there so we could color cut them. That way we know what gauges are what. Then you can take your string, run it up underneath your string into that gap. And that way you know how much clearance you're playing with. And you can file right down to it. It's just a real easy $5 do-it-yourself feeler gauges. If you don't like the measurements you're getting at your first fret, it might be time to take your guitar to your local repair person like me. But if you think you're ready to get deeper into your own guitar work, Stumac has all the tools and information you need to get started. If you like what you saw today, you should really think about subscribing to our YouTube channel. We have a ton of other videos on how to do lots of different things with guitars. I challenge you to start trying some stuff on your own guitars because only you can make your guitars play the way that you really want to and it's a lifelong skill to have.